Well, good morning, good morning. My name is Sydney Hampton, and today we're going to be discussing Luke 10. So, oh, what a chapter. There's so much in this chapter, but today we're going to zero in on verses 36 to 42. Now I'm reading out of the uh, New Living Translation. So right, we're right in the middle of the parable of the Samaritan. So Jesus says to uh, this religious leader, he says, Now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. So a couple things come to mind when we read this. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that we have a passage of action, you know, with with the Samaritan going out and really and the Lord illustrating and expanding the idea of a neighbor. I don't think that's coincidental that we have this instance of of justice and of of, of mercy, as as the man said, juxtaposed with Mary sitting at the Lord's feet. I don't think that's coincidental that they're put together. Um, so we learn in the first passage that we are, as believers of in Christ, we are compelled, we are moved by compassion. So when we see uh, an injustice, when we see someone that is on the side of the road that's hungry, or we see someone, let's say one of our friends who's going through this life crisis, and we know that we have Jesus Christ, the light of the world, it lives on the inside of us, we are compelled by compassion for that person's situation to speak the truth. Now, so we see that happening, but the Lord, I think it's teaching us in this moment that we accelerate the process of social change. We accelerate the process of mercy and justice becoming just pervading its way into the landscape of the world, the way that we think, the way that the, the common man thinks about the world. We accelerate that process when we catch the Lord's heart, just like Mary did. So it said that Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. Now we see what he's teaching. He's teaching mercy. He's teaching the expansion of the laws that um, that were that were just customary and traditional. He's expanding those laws. And as believers now, people part of this new covenant, we're understanding, okay, Lord, my goal is to bring Christ and make him known throughout the entire world. How do I do that? And the Lord is telling us in verse 42, there's only one thing worth being concerned about. It is catching his heart. It is listening to what he's teaching. So I invite you in these times, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We are seeing our nation is is coming to turn with, with police brutality and the unjust murder of George Floyd and systemic racism. We're, we are coming to terms with all these things. We are seeing them before us and there's so much to do. Just like Mary, just like Martha, we're saying, Lord, there's a lot to do. What do we... It's not fair that some people aren't helping, but I think the Lord is saying, actually, actually, to those of us that want to go out, go out and start doing those things of justice, he's saying, no, first catch my heart. First catch, catch my heart for these issues, and that will accelerate the process of them coming to our land, of them, of this, of this nation serving the Lord and loving him and all people everywhere knowing the name of Jesus. Let's catch his heart for these issues. He has an answer. He is a Lord of details. He knows the details. He's concerned with them. But let's sit at his feet. It's not a waste of time to sit at his feet and catch his heart. All right, so let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are concerned with the poor. You're concerned with the widows. You're concerned with justice, God, you are a, a just God, a righteous God, a holy God, Lord, and our, our, our heart is let's make heaven, let's make heaven come here, let's make earth look like your, your, your dwelling place, Lord. 
God, I ask that you give us a grace, that you'd release a grace in this time to sit at your feet and to catch your heart. God, I pray that you would open our eyes, give us peace, give us confidence, Lord. Give us open ears and open hearts to receive what you have for each one of us and for our nation. Lord, bless your name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I love you, church.